business news were news for business people. Welcome to Bloomberg Went Live and you're watching Transporting. I'm Navneet Saluja D'Souza. I'm Navneet, I'm Agam Makir. In the next 30 minutes, we deep dive into specific trends in the markets to draw out key takeaways and applications for investors. First, the headlines. Markets slipped from opening highs, stepped moves in both benchmark indices, broader markets trade weak. And Tata Motors and Bajaj Auto end 2017 in style. The country's largest commercial vehicle maker sees a 52% rise in December, while Bajaj Auto sold 30% more than last month. And Salil Parekh takes over as MD and CEO of Infosys today. And December, India's December manufacturing PMI comes in at a five-year high of 54.7. All right, let's take a look as to what's happening with the markets after yesterday's sell-off, which was seen in the last hour of trade. Well, the weakness continues and bears, they got, they got a good entry point because we did have a gap-up opening, but Nifty has given up its gains that were seen at the opening levels. Nifty is right now trading just about flattish, though with the negative bias and six down almost 13 points. Weakness also seen for Bank Nifty, which has been trading below its 50-day moving average as of now. Bank Nifty uh, is being led lower because of the weakness that is being seen for the nifty PSU banking space that index has been weak since the morning session so that's down over 1% as of now but uh, the concern for the market remains to be higher volatility if you look at the India VIX that's up for the third straight session and today is also the third trading day of the January series so right from the start of the series the volatility has been higher we've got key events lined up in this series you've got the budget you've also got the earnings which will start trickling in for the third quarter and also there are some concerns in the market that there could be higher uh, long-term capital gains tax which could be announced in the budget probably that spooked the markets and yesterday's sell-off was largely uh, you know led by the domestic institution let's see how the market internals they turn out to be but today's sell-off has also been seen in the broader markets the nifty mid cap and the small cap index too have seen some bit of cuts but mind you they've recovered from their days low and the market breadth as of now we'll just pull up that for you uh, the NSE advanced decline ratio is in favor of the decline so that's not a pretty picture at all let's just pull up the contributors list of the nifty constituents and see which are the stocks which are dragging the index lower so the likes of state bank of india lnt aishan motor that's your top loser in the index india bulls housing finance which was up yesterday has given up its gains today but what's supporting the index is hdfc bank reliance hdfc all these three heavyweights alongside tata motors these are the stocks which are trading in the green what about the broader markets again well uh not looking so good here eventually because uh, again when it comes to the advanced decline ratio you know Narmeet, as you mentioned we are looking at uh, more declines as against advances in terms of uh, momentum too there is a, a, too much to speak for in, including the the, the broader markets so, but we do have gains in something like a Varun beverages which is moving up by as much as 11 and a half percent and this followed by advanced enzyme technologies advanced enzyme technologies has seen uh, some amount of weakness over the past uh, few months and uh, you know that said uh, it has picked up pace in fact it's now up as much as nearly 14 percent we have uh, continuing gains in DB Realty and LNT technology services also moves up by as much as 5.3 percent followed by Ingersoll Rand India that's also up around 5.2 percent among weakness uh, Reliance Communications looking at some amount of profit taking that's followed by JP Associates which is also down around 4 percent IFCI Adani Transmission and Bhushan Steel among other counters which are losing anywhere between three to three and a half to four percent in uh, today's year of trade overall as far as the market breadth is concerned that is towards the declines phenomenally. Mm, well, DB Realty has had a great run, Agam. It's locked in upper circuit for the third straight mm. day and the stock has been doing well post the 2G verdict which came. But on trend spotting today, uh, what will be the growth drivers for Suprajit Engineering? We asked the Chairman and Managing Director, Ajit Rai. How will ATF price hike impact domestic airlines? We get an analyst view from Umesh Mehta of Sanko Securities. And finally, we take you through the big movers and shakers in markets today, all through 
transporting. But on to our first trend of the day. 2017 has been a healthy year for Suprajit Engineering with the counter seeing gains of almost 63% throughout the year. What does 2018 have in store for the company? Let's ask the management. Joining us on the phone line is the chairman and managing director of the company, Mr. Ajit Rai. Mr. Rai, good morning to you and wishing you a very, very happy new year. Happy New Year to you and uh, to your viewers and thank you for having me on your channel. Mr. Rai, uh, the first half of this year has not been uh, great for the company and the reason which you also highlighted in the past was the GST implementation and you also said that from quarter three onwards the growth will be on track. Just want to get a check, what's the ground situation? Is the second half looking better? Can we see better quarter three numbers compared to the previous quarters? Uh, yes, as I said uh, during our half yearly con call, uh, the H1 has been somewhat muted due to GST, whereas H2 would be a better half. And that is um, what has been playing out as of now. Uh, we see that Q3, there is a decent traction. The aftermarket business, which was uh, severely disrupted during the H1, has, um, has had a good uh, momentum in the Q3, and we expect that to continue in Q4 as well. And so has been the OEM India business, uh, which has been um, now again shaping up pretty well. So I would say all in all, uh, India business seems to have uh, turned the corner in that sense. And uh, certainly the traction on our exports of automotive cables has also been pretty good. So overall, we are expecting a decent uh, Q3. Uh, Mr. Rai, your aftermarket business was impacted because of GST. Uh, what's the situation there? Is it back on track? Can we see better performance from that segment, which is a key segment for, for a company like yours? Yes, I think aftermarket is an important segment to us. As you know, we uh, sell our products through our own uh, distribution channel as well as our customers buy from us for their own aftermarket requirements under their brands. So both these segments have seen clear traction, and um, we have seen in Q3 a good uh, you know, pull in the aftermarket business. So that part of the business, which you know, sort of about 15-20% of our business, has had a good uh, quarter so far. Uh, Mr. Rai, what we are witnessing in the auto sector, that is the automotive sector, is that uh, that volumes have picked up. Of course, this is to a certain extent uh, because of the low base, that because of demonetization last year. But uh, with respect to the volumes in an absolute basis, uh, what kind of trends are you witnessing? And based on these trends, what kind of demand can you expect from the domestic markets? And with, will demand recovery? come in this particular quarter, uh, will it take two or three more quarters before you see a substantial recovery in demand come in? Just to give you a little perspective, if you look at Q3 of last year and Q3 of this year, last year we had the demon effect, which, is, uh, which is obviously has not uh, had any effect of that this year. So if you look at the automotive numbers, some of them that has come out recently, is reflecting that, that there seems to be for the month or for the last two months, the number seems to be good compared to the same couple of months of the previous year. So that's more, I think, is a kind of a feel good. But if you look at the overall picture for the first nine months of the year, automotive industry has grown at about 9 to 10%, which is pretty good, actually. Whereas when we talk about ourselves, our Q3 will be a pretty good quarter having regard to the demon of the previous year. So even if you look at our Q3 compared to Q2, we will have a fairly good year. But you must keep in mind that Q2 is always the best of the year because of the festival seasons. So Q2 is always the best. And then, you know, Q2 normally is the second best. And, you know, even Q4 is more or less like Q3. So that's how the historic automotive trend is. Hmm. Mr. Rai, you just mentioned that the industry has grown about 9 to 10% in the first nine months of this fiscal. And if I'm not mistaken, Suprajit Engineering tends to grow higher than the industry growth of nearly 5 to 10%. Uh, are you on track? Are you ahead of the industry uh, growth levels? Yes, I think you know our guidance to the markets have always been that uh, as on a consolidated basis, our company as a group will grow 5 to 10% higher than industry average. If you look at the, even the half year, I mean, the industry growth was around 9%, whereas we have grown closer to 20%. And uh, we don't uh, expect, you know, we expect that for the three quarters, there is a, you know, 
uh, for the nine months ended December, we will still meet those targets that we have set out as a consolidated group, uh, in both in terms of the top line as well as our margins in terms of EBITDA. All right, uh, Mr. Rai, uh, how are input costs shaping up? Because from what we understand, uh, you know, we've been speaking to some of your peers, there has been an inching up of some of your input costs in general. Uh, what is your observation in this, and what kind of impact can it have on margins? You are correct. I think the input costs, particularly steel, uh, zinc, aluminium, all these prices have gone up in the last six months. There has been an inching up uh, pro process. And you know we have we are you know we are always in conversation with our customers, and uh, you know typically um, you know when uh, the impact of input costs have come to a stage where we feel that it is time to approach our customers, we do that and we are able to you know the usual uh, you know uh, mutual discussions able to get sort of some of these things passed on. It works both ways when the uh, you know, commodity prices come down, we give you a price downs, and when the commodity prices go up, we go to the customer for a price increase. Having said this, I think overall our margin is will continue to be in that range. We have also said that on a consolidated basis, Suprajit will have a, a bit of margin in the range of 14 to 16 percent. In the H1, it was around 15.5 uh, percent, and we still feel that we'll be in the same range. And where do you think the next leg of growth will come uh, from for a company like yours? Can it be from the global non-auto cable segment or the recovery that you just mentioned in the aftermarket business? You know, we are working on our three brand strategy. You know, Suprajit is our automotive cable strategy. Phoenix is our, uh, you know, lamp strategy as well as Westcon is our non-automotive strategy. Within these strategies, there are multiple, uh, you know, growth triggers which works on. So if I look at a larger macro sense, I would say that um, certainly aftermarket uh, will have a good robust growth. We do believe that uh, our automotive cable exports, particularly to the OEMs in Europe as well as the US, uh, will be very robust. We expect that overall, in particularly going forward, our non-automotive business will also have a strong growth. So, you know, these are some of the, you know, larger macro perspective. Within that, you know, certain segments will do well and, you know, certain smaller segments will not do that well. But overall, you know, we still think that there is a decent growth to be had in our various pockets and within our brands. Right, Mr. Mr. Rai, so, uh, you know, you did speak about Westcon, uh, and I did want to get a better picture of how Westcon is doing right now. Uh, what kind of trends are you witnessing? And if you could also give us an update on the growth outlook there. See, under Westcon, that's our non-automotive brand. You know, typically they are in that, what we call as an outdoor power equipment segment, uh, which is, uh, again, divided into a green season and a snow season. That means products going into snow time and products going to the green, green uh, requirement in the U.S. So uh, in, to that extent, it is somewhat cyclical. So typically, the, the best quarter for Westcon is the Q4. That means the quarter that just started now. So for the first three quarters, their growth has been not much, but then Q4 will be a very good quarter, as we see. So going forward to get over this, you know, cyclicality of seasons, we are also now recently rolled out uh, a strategy called SENA, that is Suprajit Engineering Non-Automotive Strategy uh, under Westcon brand, where we'll be entering at least another two, three new non-automotive segments in the next two, three years to come. That is what will, you know, uh, you know streamline in terms of cyclicality of our business. So we think that Westcon, uh, with the three manufacturing, you know, output, uh, you know, backups, one from U.S., one from Mexico, and one from India, we feel that we are well set to do some good business in the next few years in the non-automotive business. And is the integration completed or Westcon? I think you had given a, a guidance post, the uh, second quarter numbers, that it was underway or something. By when can the synergy start flowing in? Yeah, I think uh, the, the SENA strategy is for the next two to three years, whereas uh, internally in terms of, you know, integrating Westcon in terms of, you know, management information systems, people's integration, exchange of knowledge, know-how, you know, way we do things, way do they things, 
all that is more or less done now it's it's now about a year since they are uh, you know un within our brand within our group so that integration has gone on pretty well i think mr rai just one last question first half you did a bottom line of almost uh, 53 crore and you've mentioned that second half is looking better for the company what sort of numbers can one expect in the second half i'm not uh, i uh, we do not give uh, that kind of a you know uh, number per se all i want to say continue to say is that our h2 would be superior to the h1 numbers so uh, and within that larger guidance that we give but we are not able to give a specific number as such okay mr rai we leave it at that uh, thanks for joining us and giving us an outlook on uh, your company uh, we'll be watching out for more developments there uh, but with that uh, we'll move on and uh, speak about another trend that we've seen indian oil corporation has hiked aviation turbine fuel prices for the sixth consecutive month and the prices now stand at well three year high how will this impact domestic airlines let's get an analyst view here and joining us today in the studio is umesh mehta head of research at sanco securities uh, thanks for joining us umesh uh, okay so when it comes to atf prices what we've seen is that the latest number stands at if i'm not mistaken a little over 59000 rupees per kiloliter uh, and in terms of uh, if we can get the, the, you know the, the data going in, in terms of the fuel uh, cost to as a percentage of revenues for interglobe aviation it varies between 30 to 37% spicejet between 26 to 34% and jet airways around 20 to 29% um and of course which means that we all know that avi aviation turbine fuel is a reasonably important uh, factor in uh, you know the operations of our airline just to start off with that uh, what sort of impact are you are you factoring in for all these companies then correct so let's do a brief study you know why the prices are rising mm. uh, so globally i think there is a tectonic shift in the way helicopter money is now flowing into so equity mm. market world over have really gone at high levels but commodity hasn't participated and now we are seeing a larger shift in trend you know wherein not only crude commodity as a crude base metal uh, ferrous non ferrous metal everywhere there is a huge flow of funds maybe right. there is a huge punting from hedge funds so money is flowing towards that sector so given now the crude impact on crude so for example gold so gold last year was one of the best year and in right. spite of 30% degrowth in demand mm. right so so that is the power of you know funds uh, money flowing into the commodity and similarly crude oil will also have similar kind of lift off in the prices right. uh, although governments might not want to but saudi aramco uh, ipo i think that's and the crude oil prices will remain elevated mm. if that being the case you're saying till the ipo it's going to till the at least ipo and and a larger shift from uh, money uh, towards commodities and that's a bigger player rather than uh, saudi trying to keep the prices at elevated levels so the equity bull market can get punctured because of high commodity prices right. so that we have seen in last 10 15 20 years so that shift that trend has begun so given that crude and the biggest impact is aviation sector so the corollary of that is if aluminum prices can rise so can hindalco right. so if yeah. crude oil prices can rise so why can't aviation stocks fall so i think that's a right. number right. one thesis yes. Yes. so okay. you have rightly pointed out that uh, interglobe 36% of cost uh, is fuel cost uh, spice is 31 and jet is the lowest 25 right. and therefore uh, uh, so all these stocks will get impacted so other things being equal if we have just 10% increase in fuel cost yes so jet will go into negative so okay. it will report loss okay uh, right. spice jet will uh, profits will re reduce by half right and interglobe by 30% so okay. that's the how, risk how does the dynamic work uh, because these percentages uh, the cost percentage as a percentage to the revenue differs for all the three players why is that so correct so that's that is all depend on the efficiency okay. so like interglobe is the highest has got the best efficiency and therefore the operating cost is highest so 36% okay. is the operating cost right. uh, for crude oil and jet because other fixed costs are higher and uh, a uh, crude as a cost is only 25% and right. therefore the larger the 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 worst impact would be on jet on jet but what's the reason for the stock price of jet airways to go up in the you know last 3 to 4 months we've seen a good move coming about 
so that was on the basis of tie ups uh, <coughs> they will have maybe new equity investors mm -hmm. but that apart so uh, so that let stock market do what they want to do but the fundamental is you know profitability see Correct. ultimately stock price is a slave of earnings right if earnings are there if companies do report growth then market will reward but then sooner or later readjustment will happen so now so given that if okay crude oil prices rise by 10% so companies will be into a difficulty right. so there are new aircrafts that are joining in and maybe mm. in next year we believe that around 10 to 15% fleet will get expanded right so that effect will get neutralized uh, by the effect of uh, higher crude oil prices mm. so in eventually growth will not come and when growth will not be visible you know in terms of profitability right. and i think market should uh, underperform or market should correct in terms of valuation okay umesh so uh, i want to uh, re uh, visit the numbers that he spoke of uh, of course we have a lot of technical analysts and uh, ashish chaudhary mota this morning also said that he is expecting crude to move up by around at least 5 to 7% yep. but if we go with the thesis that crude moves up by another 10% from these these levels you are saying that uh, jet will move into a loss Plus. the profits of spice jet will half and what will happen to interglobe aviation 30%. 30% cut so i'm assuming based on this uh, in these three your preference still lies with interglobe aviation because that is the conversation we had last time as well correct so i think uh, so as, as vedanta's chief you know anil agarwal had said once you know while buying hindustan copper that if my cost if i'm the least cost producer i'm right. the best because i'm going to die the last so right. assuming worst happens you know still indigo uh, in uh, aviation will be better because mm. of lower cost impact and what sort of uh, numbers are you working with with regard to the outlook on crude in 2018 what's uh, the top according to you will it be 80 or more than that uh, so commodity madness <laughs> can really drive people into craziness you know just like we have seen bitcoin you know yeah, yeah. the mad rush you know and there is one sided demand and funds want to move into that we have seen you know how impact could be so i think commodity cycle is a nascent stage you know mm. okay. the we haven't seen the larger shift in money and therefore equity has really outperformed but now i think the trend is reverse and maybe entire 2018 would be the year of commodities and 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 all these things can really seriously impact our india's uh, fiscal deficit uh, so all those things can can have a you know and inflation starts rising Uh, RBI will not have the leeway to reduce interest rate. Right. Forget about uh, keeping it constant. They may have to rise because uh, 0.75 percent increase will come from Fed, and if the inflation starts rising, they they will become more hawkish, and nothing stops them to raise more than that. So I think all those risks are risks are there, and that has already begun. Mm. So in terms right. of higher commodity prices and all those things, in the last six months consecutively, if IOC is rising, uh, raising the prices, something mm. is there, you know, in terms of cost structure. Right. So, Omesh, uh, what we also understand that there is a substantial increase in traffic. There is a substantial increase in demand for, uh, you know, air uh, air tra uh, travel. Correct. Uh, that said, if you're saying that oil prices in relation to air travel uh, go rise up a lot faster, then I think all the airlines will take a dip in efficiency and in, in operations. Uh, that said, if you leave this factor aside. then in that case you would still be bullish on the aviation sector based on the traffic uh, we 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 see correct so why uh, investors need to be ready because this impact this impact will create a fall in the prices but then a correction or likely correction is a welcome for all investors because <clears throat> given the structural shift given the government's uh, will to expand infrastructure which currently there are bottlenecks so i think right. that's a difficulty even in the short to medium term mm. uh, for the airline sector so there is a double whammy number one infrastructure is not there you know uh, so for example in mumbai today you can't operate single additional flight mm. right. no one if if you want also uh, this players cannot do so that's a bottleneck yes right. uh, down the line in smaller cities government uh, those things are the infrastructure is being developed mm. but yeah this is ultimately on right. the government to expand the infrastructure much faster and it will maybe it will take around 1 1 to 2 years to do all those things but then traffic structural shift in the traffic is a real theme right because railways are continuously now we are into not right. for public they are now into for profits you know at right. least in the right. uh, higher right. category so that is a biggest trigger for uh, the aviation sector you know the larger and larger number of people will travel mm. and top line will grow 
But sooner all these things, when they get corrected, crude oil price get corrected, sure, the profitability because. will bloat. Absolutely. And that's why we said that airline is a cyclical stock, cyclical yes. because of underlying commodity prices that they are they have to they are dependent on. Right. right. The moment crude, you know, uh, takes a dip. Then I think that the huge beta will come in the airline stock. So yes, 10-15 percent correction, good. Let it happen, mm. and then it would offer another. You know, from a three to five year perspective, I think this they are this sector is fairly valued, and after a correction, I think uh, mouth watering valuation will come into. And five year growth, I think, is a huge. So out of shift. the three stocks, you said you you prefer Indigo, right? In, yeah. Okay, India. that's the only mm. player which has evinced interest in buying uh, Air India operations. Yeah. But I guess they said they only want to buy international operations. And I was just reading an article. I guess uh, Air India has opened its books to all the prospective bidders now. Uh, let's see if uh, Indigo bids for it or not. But according to you. um if it's uh, if they cannot bid alone for the international operations uh, will they go to bid together for domestic and international if that happens do you think it's going to be a good move by indigo see uh, indigo considering they're sitting on lot of debt i'm sure they'll have to take a little bit of debt Correct. also so indigo also has done some amount of uh, fund raising mm. even the promoters have uh, sold uh, some amount of stake maybe they are getting ready because jet in a way is also getting foreigners uh, to invest in uh, uh, their company so i think on a strategic basis indigo is more ready uh, based on what they have doing it right, right. now right. to bid <coughs> for aggressively for air india and let's see i think sitting here it would be it would be speculation whether or not they will bid but i think chances are that they should <coughs> in right. their in the best interest of the company right Okay, Omesh. We leave it at that. Thanks Thank a lot you. for joining us and giving us an outlook on what the ATF prices can mean to something like uh, an Interglobe Aviation jet, or for that matter, Spice jet. But uh, we'll move on and uh, we'll take a look at what's really moving the markets right now. And for that, we have Yash Upadhyay joining us. Uh, good morning, Yash. Tell us what do you have for us today. Thanks for that, Agam. So first up, we have Tata Motors, and the stock had surged as much as three percent today after the company came out with their December auto sales numbers. Uh, the December sales came in fifty-two percent higher at around fifty-four and a half thousand units versus thirty-six thousand. Prestige Estates gained almost four percent today after the company announced the acquisition of Capitaland's stake in various mall entities for a total consideration of about three hundred and forty-two crore rupees. Uh, the management subcommittee approved all of the seven uh, transactions, and they. hope to complete them uh, by march of 2018 uh, the acquisitions are done with a view to consolidate the company's uh, the group's operations and the expected rental income from the same is expected to increase by as much as 75 crores on an annuity basis bajaj hindustan was also up almost uh, 10% 10 and 1/2% today after the company successfully implemented the uh, the s4a scheme global longevity too was up about 4 and 1/2% after the company said that it would be uh, going ahead with the buyback and would be buying back close to 20 lakh shares at a price of about 250 rupees and the buyback will be open from the 8th of january and would close on jan 19th NLC India was also up as much as 10 and a half percent today after the company commissioned its 130 megawatts solar plant in Naveli under the government's green power initiative. Uh, the 130 megawatts solar plant will be uh, commissioned via two blocks of 60, 65 megawatts each, and the tariff has been set at about five rupees ten paise for a period of 25 years. Thomax Industries was up almost six percent today after the company said that it has received an order worth 327 crore. rupees uh, from a public sector company based out of west india uh, the project is expected to be completed in the period of 24 months and lastly we have ramco systems which is up almost 7% today after they secured an order from world's largest aerial sightseeing company papillon group for the maintenance and engineering of its fleet All right, Yash. Thanks a lot for bringing in all the buzzing stocks of the day. But let's also address uh, Ashok Leyland. The numbers for the month of December, the sales number have just come out. You've got the total sales, which are at 19,253 units. Visa V R estimate of almost 16,000 units, and that's a growth of almost 79 percent uh, on year-on-year basis. And as you can see, post the numbers, the stock too has reacted positively. It's up almost 2 percent. Good growth also seen for LCV sales. That was up six. Uh, 
16.9%. Uh, so good going for Ashok Leyland. The stock has reacted positively as of now alongside TVS. I guess uh, so far the numbers look good from the automakers. Absolutely, Namneet. Uh, certainly looking very good for, for now, uh, largely towards in terms in line with expectations. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Trend Spotting. Up next is Hot Money, so stay tuned in a Bloomberg Quinter.